Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video I'm going to show you my sharpening system, uh, why I never use any jigs, uh, what are the benefits or uh, skills that you receive uh, by freehand sharpening, which are major by the way, and uh, all that to come in this video, so stay tuned. So just before I continue on with the video I want to uh, point out a few key things uh, now this is uh, just my opinion on this it's not the definitive way or the only way of sharpening our wood turning tools uh, just keep that in mind now i do understand why most wood turners uh, going for a system that involves using a jig uh, you know to get a repeatable angle to get pretty grinds to save maybe steel now probably the best benefit for me at least would be uh, if somebody has a motion restriction uh, so do due to some injury or something like that uh, jigs will help you out in that terms to sharpen your tools uh, now my opinion on this is that freehand sharpening will give you much greater skills and benefits longer down the road uh, which will transfer to the lathe which is where you use your sharpened tools so towards the end of the video i'm going to sharpen uh, one of the more difficult tools um, for the beginners is uh, which is ball gouge and we're going to sharpen it uh, what i think is probably the easiest freehand sharpening method so so just to give you a little bit of history or behind the scenes let's say uh, I've been turning uh, roughly now we are actually approaching 18 years so back in the day when I was first year of uh, high school so I was 15 years old um, even back then uh, the wood turning and woodworking was mushed together as one unit uh, before that uh, it was separate branches so you would go uh, specifically into school for the wood turning or woodworking uh, so uh, I was lucky enough to had one of the mentors or masters that teach me woodworking also was one of the last teachers of wood turning and uh, he taught me uh, one of the basics let's say and uh, now before this grinder here which i'll explain in a second we used old it was industrial unit which was great nice and smooth uh, with the big uh, this kind of gray wheels here and uh, it did job really well and it was great unit so that was let's say my first encounter with grinder so no. roughly uh, six years ago five six years years ago I bought my first lathe for my home shop here and uh, this is the first grinder uh, that I got from my late uncle and uh, it's a uh, it's quite small unit uh, it's nice and smooth but small uh, it's a 125 mil diameter uh, wheel uh, which is I believe five inches uh, full speed I only have full speed uh, grinders I don't use uh, slow speed still and, use uh, this uh, grinder I just have it in a in a drawer and pull it out where I need to uh, I use this wheel to sharpen Bensa blades which I'll show you in a separate video uh, but here you can see this makeshift uh, platform uh, for sharpening tools which uh, when I again when I bought my first lathe here for home home shop uh, this is what I used this is rugged it's it's just uh, this is uh, thin aluminum wrapped around uh, this is um, some sort of a t a timber here and uh, I mean it works great it's nice and stable actually or stable enough to sharpen tools but get the job done for a year or so uh, before I move on so now between this one and uh, my first one there was uh, one that I had maybe a week or so and then I give it to my father-in-law it was really lousy one it was a um, six inch uh, diameter uh, grinder but it was so terrible so badly made uh, so I just gave it to him and uh, that day I sort of went to a uh, used market uh, website here in, in Croatia and I find the guy here quite close uh, he had this grinder for really cheap money uh, it was still like in the box but it's older model from this Einhell company uh, now this grinder isn't all that bad uh, now it's not the best quality made because this here is plastic the base and uh, here the way it attaches to uh, to the 
top unit here which is quite heavy um, it makes a lot of vibrations and it's not a stable unit uh, this one is 200 mil or 18 8 inch uh, diameter wheels a full full speed again and I believe it's 500 uh, watts and uh, again this served me uh, the longest before the one which I'll show you in a few seconds my uh, current one uh, but again this one did the job on this one on this side uh, this is a 60 grit uh, gray wheel and here is 80 grit white wheel and uh, uh, up to this point which I'll show you in a few seconds I only use this kind of setup I never had CBN wheel or anything close to that we come to this unit here which is my current setup and this is a record power unit which was sent to me uh, as a gift uh, from my buddy Peter from uh, Toby Slovenia he's a record power dealer and he has uh, some other tools as well um, but this tool is far more smoother and uh, much more quality tool and it's really not expensive at all uh, uh, compared to any other unit that I had um, it's 8 inch uh, diameter wheels or 200 mil and uh, on this side I have a 60 grit gray wheel here and here also as a gift a CBN wheel uh, now it came from uh, with this I believe this is 80 grit uh, white wheel it's quite wide one it's 32 mil or 30 oh no sorry 40 mil wide the same as the cbn wheel here uh, now i know some of you will ask uh, what is the cbn wheel grit uh, now uh, the manufacturer states it's a uh, hundred grit or b91 if i'm not mistaken the code for that grit now on some other sites uh, it uh, states that it's um, 180 grit so i'm not sure which one is right or, not, or wrong um, so between the 100 grit or 180 grit now i would prefer maybe to get uh, 80 grit uh, wheel so maybe that for the future so i don't really find the need to get any higher than 180 grit 180 is perfectly fine for everything that you do um, really you don't need to go any higher than that even if you freehand sharpening and you use fine wheels like above 180 grit uh, you can get it actually quite hard to to get the sort of a sharpened edge up a sharpened profile up to the edge uh, so it's nice and sharp because uh, it removes so little steel uh, that, it's, that it's hard to freehand sharpen that's why um, I don't know 600 grit or even higher than that uh, are best maybe used with the jig now again do you really need to my opinion is you really don't need to have all, all that fine wheels 180 grit is more than fine for all all that we do even with the skew or any other tool and uh, again we're going to sharpen one of the difficult tools for beginners to sharpen especially freehand and that is ball gouge we're going to use platform uh, i'm going to show you how to sharpen it and then i'm going to show you on the piece of timber uh, i'm going to sharpen the ball gouge using this gray wheel here 60 grit and you won't see too much of the difference so uh, just to sort of prove a point that you don't have to go uh, into absurd amount of expenses to to buy the the smoothest or the finest wheels out there because these will get the job done and in my opinion the smoother that you go or the finer grid that you go you sort of reach to point of i'm not sure how to express this point maybe you uh, after 180 grit my opinion is at least uh that you won't get any, any much more benefit uh apart maybe uh, of using less steel in terms of sharpening accessories like this to help you out sharpening um, this platform here from one way it's a really great one now what i would suggest is uh, probably due to welding here underneath uh, it had sort of a belly here so it's a, a little bit more like a rocking motion when you sharpen flat tools like skew or scrapers on the platform it sort of rocks and gives sort of a weird emotion emotion uh, and um, it sort of reflects on the edge as well so what i did i just uh, removed this uh, section and um, 
put it upside down on uh, some wet and dry 400 paper give it a few rubs and you can see now it's much uh, flatter let's say and works great so now. you remember my first grinder and that makeshift platform so on my second one and on that red one I had to make a platform that was a little bit sturdier or that I had to um, sort of way to adjust it a little bit more easier before I bought this one from one way uh, so I cannot find it unfortunately not sure where I put it but basically what it was it was this kind of L brackets uh, which had a slot on the sides uh, really cheaply made but actually it worked and it was quite sturdy so I put the short ends together and I put a flat piece of steel on top uh, bolted together uh, nice and flat so the flat was nice and um, flat the top and uh, now here so that will go like this and here on the sides and connecting down to the table was something like this again one another l bracket so if i just put it like so sorry i had to have the camera in one hand so this will go like this you have the bolt on the sides and you can adjust this up and down where you need to go and i would have it bolted here and again i could move this a little bit in and out not too much but because uh, this platform here is much better made obviously and has much greater adjustability and much easier and most of the times i would have this set for skew and uh, i would have it there probably for a month or so i wouldn't change it at all uh, because you see uh, throughout the video my way of sharpening which is a little bit different and again i'll show you the easier method which involves using a platform itself so uh, now i'll just set up the camera and uh, we'll set off into sharpening i'm going to show you uh, my way of sharpening bow gouges uh, or any other gouges for that matter and uh, i'm going to show you the easiest method to get involved into freehand sharpening uh, now if you watch uh, or follow my mentor richard raffan uh, either on youtube or throughout the books or dvds then you know that usually what he has is either a sort of a platform with a rod or he uses the top of the platform to rest the tool here and manipulate what he needs to do here on the on the on the tool itself so throughout the years i had poorly made grinders and platforms um, so i had to adjust let's say so i found that what works best for me is a little bit different way of holding the tool so to counteract the vibration from the gr grinder and the vibration from the tool rest uh, what i've sort of come up with was i just hold or my hand is a buffer zone or amortization between two uh, of two steels let's say coming to get together and vibrate so i would hold the tool in my hand and manipulate that way and uh, throughout the years i sort of get in the muscle memory of doing that and works for me great so i'll just show you that uh, if you see here a little patch uh, it was this kind of dust here uh, on a certain spot on the CBN so it's not damaged or anything like that so again I just hold the tool in my hand find the bevel and do the dance Now I did get a few questions on why I do not use slow running grinders and if you turn it off uh, it will already becomes a slow running grinder so uh, this tool is now again sharp ready to be used now it may not look the bevel here the great or anything like that but i know it's nice and sharp it will do the job what i'm asking to do it it will do great job what i have here or what i've done to gouge is actually ruined it so i put the flat spot here i've messed up the bevel here quite badly put a few nicks here on the course wheel there and uh, so now i want to repair this and show you how you get nice perfect bevel the constant uh, angle and everything using just the platform and the flat portion here of the platform so to do this what i like to do first is flip the ball gouge upside down and start higher here and drop 
down. Do this few times. So what that will give you is a sort of outline of the flute, I hope you can see. And also what it will give you is this sort of a flat spots, I hope you can see them. Uh, shiny spots, Th those are what you have to remove. So I still have a little bit on the nose. Okay, so I have the entire flute, I hope you can see, covered. and. Uh, the profile is slightly um, curved wings, just slightly, and that will make this tool quite good uh, for shear scraping and the general like a ball gouge uh, usage. This will be great gouge. To find a good angle for this to show you. So this is our original or first starting position, uh, which uh, the foot now is facing straight up and down, straight into the wheel. So this position. That's our, let's say, zero, but we have, on both sides, we have to swing the tool around to make the wings uh, sharp. So, the end position for the wings here on the side is the bottom flute has to be roughly parallel with the uh, platform here. So, do not go roll it too much close or keep it too much open like this. So, the bottom, again, bottom portion of the flute has to be roughly parallel with the platform. So first what I'll do, I have to remove a lot of this flat spot. So just focus on that, those first. To keep the wings nice and curved, I don't like flat wings like on 40-40 grind. You have to rock the tool back and forth a little bit. The other ring as well. So this is still a roughing stage, but hope you can see the profile is getting there, so almost, I still have a few flat spots here on the top and here around the nose, hope you can see and here is a good indicator that I haven't reached the top, uh, top edge here uh, at the nose here, but you can see I'm getting the tool where it needs to be so, so now we can get this to final shape of sharpness, let's say stage uh, so again the motion is like this you can start here from the middle where the foot is pointing straight up and then you roll it and swing the handle to the right or to the left sorry and then the same to the right but you have to keep the constant tool pressure down on the tool rest you cannot lift it up And do the other wing. A little bit more. I hope you can see this is now nice and sharp. Uh, single bevel, pretty much single bevel all the way around. Uh, nice and uh, nice profile here outline of the parabolic flute and this tool now will get the job done really really nice you have nice curves you can see on this outline here on the top a nice slight curve on the wings which will get it nice and sheer scrape so this tool will now work beautifully and all you have to do i mean it, it takes time obviously to practice it but i believe this is the easiest way to get into freehand sharpening using the, this method uh, this is the foundation for using 4040 grind as well uh, if you want to do freehand i believe you can do it maybe some of uh, have done using a jig but i don't think it's good enough as doing it on the platform now what i have here is another ball gouge uh, same gouge but this is regular size 
and uh, so basically the same steel, same size and everything, but this one has a still the asymmetric grind which I much more preferred. It has a little bit more of a curve on the wings and uh, I find I'm just used to using this and works really really great. Now just for the comparison I'm going to grind this one on a coarse wheel there with a 60 grit. Here uh, what I was talking about um, poorly uh, platforms like this you can hear it vibrates and uh, you have to put a lot of pressure if you're using the platform to stabilize it and I don't like that so this is why I developed this uh, method sort of to hold the tool in my hand and uh, so I'll just sharpen this to asymmetric grind and although this is 6 degree wheel and it's in this sort of old style gray wheel um, by using it lightly so light pressure tool on the on the wheel uh, you won't remove much material I know it's a coarse wheel so it uh, inevitably will remove a little bit more um, steel than CBN 180 or 100 grit which whatever this one is um, but still it's, it, do, it don't remove like um, I don't know millimeter or two of steel it doesn't work like that if you use it correctly so light pressure you just let the weight of the tool on the on the wheel and that's pretty much the same goes uh, and transfer that sort of a skill or technique to the lathe so I find the bevel And uh, the nice thing about this uh, or white wheel or pink wheels is that you have the sparks flying over the edge when you reach the edge itself. With the CBN you don't have that, you have a sort of a discoloration or maybe even raising a burr you may, that you can see. There we go, so that's straight from the 60 wheel grit. I know the bevel, you can see the grit, uh, but everything comes down to how it performs. So let's go to a lathe and uh, we'll see the difference. Grab the uh, another ball gouge uh, just to chew everything up. There we go, so that's trued up and now I can make nice shear cut with this one with the CBN. See, it works quite well. Even with one hand. So the surface behind you can see that you cannot ask for a better surface. Now this was a rough out bowl, uh, but it already started to crack, so it's best used for a demo piece or purposes like this. So again, this is a really good finish straight from the tool. So we'll do the same using this one, which is sharpened with 60 grit. Thank you. 
I don't feel much difference in terms of pressure or anything like that. And it feels the same. And just to see, it looks the same. So if you can so, see, again, really isn't any difference that I can see in using a 60 grit uh, gray wheel and the CBN, which is either 100 again or 180 grit. Um, the, the thing is that people often forget is uh, sure, if you're using hand tools like planes or spoke shaves, you have to have, or chisels for that matter, uh, regular like bench chisels, uh, you have to have the most sharpest that you can get the edge because you're using the hands as a power to plow through the wood uh, or uh, let's say in the plane uh, you have to use the power of your body uh, all together to push through that little plane through the wood and uh, here at the lathe we have the power of the lathe to spin this wood through our tool so it really doesn't matter or the two or sorry the wood really doesn't know uh, which grit is on the on your gouges so but, uh, let's just see on the inside if there is any difference so i just put a little tenon here and uh, this is the benefit let's say of this kind of long grind because you can use to cut tenons uh, usually with the asymmetric grind it's not that easy Um, now, since I have this bigger chuck in, I'll actually put a larger foot and again this is... Okay, so I can turn this around. and I cut it too small so we'll do it again In terms of grind itself, I have uh, several videos and I'll do a few more as well on why I like asymmetric grind instead of like more popular, let's say, um, uh, long grind or Irish grind or 40-40 grind. Now we can see on the inside, so same uh, gouge here with a CBN sharpened edge. Let's do one more. Now here you might be able to see a lot of ridges and uh, that's because of this long bevel here, but that doesn't really matter. The point is the surface and I'll just bring a little bit more light. Um, I mean the surface is again clean without too much um, problems at all and uh, I'll use the asymmetric grind with a 60 grill a 60 grit wheel sharpen And again, I mean, there is really nothing stopping you here to start sanding with 180 grit and uh, it should be it. So, I like this little venture into a little bit of history behind my grinders and uh, my thought process behind my sharpening.
methods. Uh, now, the point is you really don't have to have much to get you started and to get really decent results here. Now I know two other turners that use uh, old-fashioned wheels, coarse wheels like 80 or even 60 grit and that is Jimmy Clues and uh, Mike Mahoney. Uh, so they both use really coarse wheels and again this will get your job really done and effectively and uh, you can hone your skills and everything uh, on a cheaper setup then instead then you'll see with time that if you need uh, like expensive setup for Tormek or anything like that um, or any of the jigs or uh, similar stuff now I know again the benefits of using the jig it gets you the perfect grind let's say all the time and everything but um, I just really don't like the saying that I really want to spend time turning instead of sharpening. The sharpening is the process of wood turning and you learn so much at the grinder and uh, that transfers to the lathe as well. So the pressure, you do not want to force the tool as you can see maybe here I, w uh, I can flex the ball although it's not thin I can flex if I put too much pressure on so the same goes on the grinder you don't want to put uh, this uh, tool on the let's say coarse wheel like that 60 grit uh, and just jam it in because it will burn immediately you will ruin the edge and, and so on you have to be careful what you're doing light pressure same again goes here especially if you notice uh, light pressure when I said it scrapers uh, standard scrapers are sort of pressure sensitive so you have to be neutral with the scraper and light pressure just glide over the surface to get the best results so it's all sort of a nice cohesive um, how should I say the community between the grinder the lathe and the tool so hope you sort of uh, understand this process the thought behind this video and uh, hopefully it, this will sort of clarify especially if you're just starting out and you're buying your first setup or thinking about buying your first setup uh, again there are numerous sharpening systems out there uh, again nothing wrong with them they get the job again done and uh, it may be in a little bit easier manner faster manner uh, but again with this setup and the freehand sharpening either with a platform or holding it in the hand or using the top of the platform all these freehand methods uh, will give you a little bit more benefits of these skills that interact with grinder and the lathe so uh, sorry this video is a lot of talking but hopefully this will help you out on your journey and uh, see you in the next video